One and all, welcome back to the Age of Empires for Action. It's time for more team tournament fun time. Fields of Blood, a $1,000 tournament featuring some prominent names from around the world. We're into game number two of this best of three up bracket series between the best of China and the best of Vietnam. And we might get to see the best the minds have to offer because I've been underwhelmed by the Farimba's presence in season nine with a rework. But in team games, when you know you're going to be 200 pop capped, this might be the place to bring it out, where population as a resource becomes the most important factor. Having overall better Musafadi could be worth it. Love to see. It's already a little bit of a wild start, right? We've got Saharan Trade Network coming in, which just feels a little bit unorthodox. I'll get the predictions up now, so we'll put two minutes left or right, get your predictions in now. This series, by the way, has already proven insanely wild with game number one. It could get even more wild considering that if this goes to a third game, it will be Baltic, which is a crazy engagement map for 44s. Yeah, double French strat is pretty cool. I really like this. It gives you so much dominion across the map, but the issue is you allowed a bastard through, and that's kind of a no-no. We're actually seeing Vietnamese do that same crazy strong comp. Abbasids, Mongols. Mongols are just seen as a phenomenal choice as the game goes on because they're able to block out trade. Kind of makes sense. But it's more than that. It's not just the way they block out trade with Mass Magadai. It's the support elements with things like Kurotai as the game goes on. Also, just a surprisingly good sieve when you get the hyper late game Imperial. One of the best traders in the game. And then Abbasid's all over the place. Good, right? Eco Wing is phenomenal. You get to scale for free. Camel Archers are king. Camel Riders are incredible as well. It's very cost efficient from a population standpoint. And you can afford the heavy cost of them because the bastards are so cost efficient at escalating economy. And blue did age up. So warning folks, this is just a UI issue. Um, I can't remember the name of the person that created this custom UI for team games. It's not their fault. It's actually the core game's fault. The core game fault, the way it tracks House of Wisdom means it just does this. So the tech up has happened. It looks like it was a growth wing play. We have got Vua Ao Lang, which of course is Mia Micah. Playing with the Mongols has been harassing with the spears between bases. That's why I love this Saharan trade network. Just a nice blocker to that potential hit. And he's going to give him the space. So it looks like we're not going to be seeing the Farimba this game. It's the classic choice of the Fulani. Makes sense, right? Like if you look at the rest of their lineup, having French like this, having Ayabids. If playing into Farimba, you're not contributing anything for a very long time. You almost need these... Very aggressive sieves coupled with a, a very aggro sieve. But in this role, you can see it's aggro, aggro, aggro. A little bit of greed into immediate aggro. This is a timing build coming in from Team China. They're looking to take over the map by about 15 minutes. Can I get cows and then new units? I mean, you could, but this is all timing, right? Like, when I see the, the ranches being set up like this, you could argue this is a bait, and that is a potential option. Of... Wait a second. Wait a second. No, I think he just misclicked. Widow Mine has actually blocked his Fulani placement. I mean, this could actually be an elaborate bait. We've seen players do this before. Do you guys remember that classic game where... I can't remember which player it was. He built the Fulani setup and then dropped the Farimba in the middle. So theoretically, we could be seeing that. It does have a, a delayed return on value compared to going for the classic choice. But in fairness, like if you go for the standard choice, you're thinking about going mass sofas here, right? To have mobility. Maybe Musafadi. The problem with doing this is on the other side, you've got Keshik, you've got French, you've got these camels as well. It's not going to be easy. Well, the truth will be quickly approaching at this rate. Spears are at least being built up to deal with the incoming forces. Mongols are continuing to be a little bit annoying in the base of the French. I haven't really looked on the other side. There has been a little bit of chip damage being done here as dives have been coming through, but for the most, the Vietnamese players have been appropriate with their reactions. We even have Kyo going into Spearman. Instead of just doing that classic rush to Castle Age, it's a semi-rush. Double outpost as well. He's investing quite expensively here. Yeah, uh, there you go. Confirmation, it is going to be the Fulani. He did finally realize. A little bit of a mistake made there. 
Yeah, I don't know. I, I've not seen any examples of games yet. I mean, I haven't been able to cast that many on Season 9, but I didn't see many in the preseason tournament we done, and I didn't see anyone talking about Reddit where the Fulani didn't look better. The Farimba build just doesn't feel great. You know, you don't scale quick enough. You don't really get enough value out of most of your unique units. In a lot of the cases, you're kind of just building into more of what you were already doing, if that makes sense. And like, oh yeah, you can build like better javelins, but if you were stuck in the feudal tool, you're already building javelins. So yes, you can have better ones, but at the cast lays point, you're looking for a pivot into a new form, right? And I think ever since people discovered Fulani and how good so far in particular, the interest in a Farimba type build just doesn't really exist. You know, if Farimba had some sort of sofa thing in there, even if it wasn't necessarily that you got a new sofa type, but you could build them out of it, that would help. Should have kept the five unit production? Agreed. I don't know why they removed that. You just have no pacing anymore, right? Like, what was the idea of Farimba? Were you meant to rush Castle Age? Because, like, the other thing is you can't upgrade your existing units in a lot of cases, if I remember correctly. You can't just, like, have 60 Musafadi and then you get the Farimba form and they all become that, right? If I remember correctly, it's only the new units that get that. But someone can confirm that for me. They can now? Okay, they fixed that. So that's at least an improvement. But yeah, it just, it still feels like a, a landmark that doesn't have a true place. There's a little bit of harassment coming out from Vietnam hasn't paid off yet, but we are seeing the castle text coming through. Lumber now making his way up with the culture wing. Knights are diving in though. This isn't a free game right now for Orange. These Knights causing anarchy. A lot of garrison time, so a lot of idle time. On top of that, a lot of villagers getting killed. So rough timing there. Love that. Just why find the perfect moment to dive in when all the allies of Lumber were not looking. Louis nearby as well. We haven't talked about Louis yet. He is on well, I still consider to be his signature sieve. You know, he built a reputation at the start of this year as, I'd say, the best shown player, full stop. And although we haven't seen it recently, I think it's still going to hold up to be like a top four in the game, at least. It's been a bit rough for Louis. For those that have been following his journey, start of 2024, even the end of 2023, this guy looked like the prodigy kid, right? He looked like the, the Chinese coming in Marine Lord. Second half... <laughs> Second half, he kind of looked more like Marine Lord in that Magic series at Wallah, right? Looked a bit flabbergasted, hasn't been as clean, can still take games, but hasn't been as dominant as he once was. Hopefully, we'll see him recover. I think, actually, the end of the year being an EGC tournament in a 2v2 format really will benefit him because it's a comfort zone. For those who don't know, Louis may dominate the 1v1 ladder, but he also still consistently ranks highly season after season in team games. Night raiding in and out on each side. Yeah, I've got the marketplace is now getting set up. So funnily enough, it's not going to be one of the French players doing this. It's actually a Malian player. That really surprises me, but it kind of makes sense, right? You haven't got the mats to give that extra little bit of gold trickle. You haven't got much map control to sneak out for those of these pit mines. So at this point, you've got a lot of food, maybe not much gold. One thing that I remember being awkward, and someone could confirm if they fixed it, I remember the trade for Malians sucked because the outposts, the taxes, the tolls, weren't correctly calculating with the new trade system ever since they changed it to drop off at each end. I think that's still the case. And wait. What? Oh my god, caught in a landslide, more like caught in a cyclone of greed. Game one, he goes Imperial Age Delhi at 11 minutes. Game two, 13 minute Imperial Age Iobids. Are you kidding me? And not just that, I mean it was quicker than that I think. He's got six relics, he went Desert Raider Wing, this is sick guys. It means you're gonna get a ludicrous 640 resources extra per minute. Because you get 1,280 worth of, of production from the seven Desert Raiders that produce. Was it? Uh, it might have been 630, actually. It's over 600, though. Dude, this is crazy. I love this. <laughs> I don't think anyone on the Vietnamese squad expected this. This might be a 2-0. 
What a cool build. You know, last game I questioned the motive. They made it work, but it felt dubious in ways out of Team China. This time it just looks overly dominant. Viva Van is at least trying to do some chip damage. The traders are already revealing themselves because they are going for the neutral trade post. So maximum value coming in for the Malian player. 173 gold each way if he can protect it. Third TC now getting added in by Y, who is still lagging behind in the Feudal Age, as French players often do. And Kyo now heading up into Imperial Age with the Palace of Swabia. Magadai are on the way for Mio Micah. However, the Desert Raiders might be a solid solution to that. Fuck, the Desert Raiders are already diving across map. <laughs> this is so cool out of CSO. I do love how, by the way, in the UI, it shows what his pub name is, and then here it shows whatever I registered him as on my account. <laughs> so yeah, we were right before. CSO is indeed... Uh, wait, I think we thought it was the other way around before. So Widow Mine is Scarlet. Y is Y, from what I remember. And then Blue is CSO. So like to make it simple for you guys, this is kind of Team Elephant. This is, obviously, they have two members, but we'll just call them that. At least that should be coming in soon. Magadan in the meantime are going to be running through the Donzos. Not really doing anything with dying. And also trade now in trouble. So a big hit on the way here. Mio Micah finding that soft underbelly. The return fire might be quickly coming here. The Camel Arch is not able to contest this many Desert Raiders. Still more to come. I think we must surely have the upgrade on the way. No. Okay, there we go. Finally, Elite Tech is on the way. 30 seconds out. And then these boys are going to get ludicrous. Well, there's no trade going on. I think that's what he was looking for. In the meantime, they're going to dive on the left side from Louis. Joined by Y. So both of them piling on top of Uber Van, just trying to eradicate the night threat here. Kind of surprised by that. I don't think yellow is your biggest threat here. I'd actually say it's orange. Because yellow building knights, you don't care. You've got Desert Raiders, right? Orange, on the other hand, could build it into Camel Riders, and Camel Riders can decimate Desert Raiders. <laughs> Maybe not when they're this good, though. 19 damage per swing. Double that against Cav. And then they have 7 melee armor. 175 HP. But remember, you've still not got the melee tech levels yet. And if we ever get to a stage where you've got infantry nearby, you've got a tech that gives you an extra plus 3, plus 3 armor. So, for those that just done the math in your head, and your draw drops slightly, that would equal 30 melee armor on a cavalry. Credit to him, though. I actually think Mio Mike is kind of carrying this, this point in the game. The only reason this is not snowballing out of control into a 2-0 is China just doesn't have the raw economy count right now. They're losing so much to these raid groups. I feel like the reactions are kind of subpar as well. It's difficult, but you kind of need to find a way of creeping out and getting some walls on, on Rocky River like this at the stage. I mean, you're at 232 economy. Someone has to bite the bullet. Might simply feel too late. So instead, they're going to focus on diving instead. Desert Raiders try to go in. They have got powerful torch damage, remember, now that they're imped up. But there's a lot here to defend with. Lumber, Vuavan now looking to hold this back. The Camel Archers are there. The Knight follow up to buff this away. The army is simply too small. For Blue to stand his ground here. Magadai. Are at least being chased by javelins, but this is so depressing. <laughs> they need walls. If they're not going to build a wall across map, they need walls between their bases. This is actually really important because it may look like you're bailing on your teammate, your buddy, your bro, but what you're actually doing is eliminating the ripple effect. Magadai are so lethal in team games because when people don't wall each other out, Magadai also aren't walled out. So if I start in Blue's base, I hop into Teal's, into Purple's, into Green's. If there were small walls between their starting tree lines, Magadai wouldn't have this level of agency. Instead, though, it looks like we're getting some forward walls. The CSO is trying to secure the center. This is typical in Rocky River. Remember, Rocky River, I'd say if you're kind of standard land maps, yes, it has water, but I don't really count it, has probably one of the longest average game lengths of anything in rotation right now. Because Rocky River... Tends to lean to this point where people are just going to wall those gaps. And it becomes very difficult to flood the map from there on. On top of that, you just have very safe starting points usually in 1v1s. Team games, you're a little bit more exposed as we're seeing here. 
I think the solution to all this is still in Lomba. He's got the right call building into Camera Riders. He just needs to scale them now. He has got the camera handling. This is really good because if you now get up to Elite Tech, your camels will chase down the Desert Raiders. There's no escaping it. But now, though, these camels are going to be becoming a problem, folks. We're at 45 and scaling past 50. <laughs> oh, my God. And by the way, was that Adabex? I think that was just biology, maybe. Yes, Biology's came in. He didn't get Adabex in this game. He does, however, have Silked Bowstrings on the way. That's kind of nutty. So he's going to go up to, what, 5.5 range? That means he's going to be outgunning the Camel Arches. Magadai as well cannot reach you at that point. So you'll always strike first. That coming through. Javelin's here as well. It's problematic for both the Magadai and the Camel Arches. I think they might have done it. How do you fight against this? Desert Rays are going to dive in. Interesting they're not using the melee form. A few of them have shifted over, though. CSO absorbing all the blows. The rest of the army can maintain. Teal already diving in. Tech Up's going to come out. It's Van, the French player in yellow, moves up into Imperial. But the Red Palace, it's so far back, man. I don't feel like it's doing enough here. Thank you, Veronon, for helping do summon, though. Appreciate the sub coming through. As we're now watching one of the Vietnamese players being pounded into submission here. Only 25 military. Desert Raiders focus fire on that primary TC due to the Arbus emplacement, so that's now been removed from the defense. The Javelin count is still overwhelming, and the difference between now and just two minutes ago is there's no counter-economy damage. Where's the Magadai raid? It's now trying to make its way. It may be too late because this damage feels a lot more permanent. So it's going to be a temporary retreat. Happy with the fact they took out the primary. I mean, in fairness, Vibravan, he may be an Imperial Age, but he doesn't have that much right now. 70 Eco, only 23 Military. It's not the worst idea to retreat like this. And behind it, Y is now going to be teching up. Yes, his military is much smaller than his counterpart on the Vietnamese side. But with a bit of slinging, this could easily be 50, 60 Knights in the blink of the eye. Not just that, the Desert Raiders are back again. This time, not just with the Silk Bowstrings, but also with the Incinera Arrows. So all of a sudden, 17 damage. Another thing that's scary, guys, is as you boom into the late game, these Golden Ages come out, right? We're at 43 of 50 to unlock Tier 4. If he goes from 43 structures to 75, he'll increase Camel's attack speed by 20%. Yeah, that's where Camel right, uh, Desert Raiders can just be the most broken thing in the game. Especially with the kind of unavoidable animation cancelling they have, right? We don't tend to ban it in tournaments because it's very difficult to kind of police. I think also because players felt dirty about it, a lot of them just avoided using Desert Raiders. Mass Desert Raiders on their own in 1v1s. Desert Raiders now shifting to a new base. This time, they're looking to pick apart Mia Micah, who does not have an impressive economy. Only 65 in total. Soon it's going to be pre-50. Spinman defense is coming in from Kyo to assist. But remember, with the changes made to infantry in Imperial Ace, they no longer get that extra health. They get extra armor if you get Elite Army Tactics, which means even if he had the University Techs, these Spearmen would not be a solid defense against Mass Desert Raiders. <laughs> the knock-on effects of these changes from Season 9. First, the Elephants look overpowered, and now you're seeing Desert Raiders overwhelmingly buffed due to all these different changes. Camel Archers are at least going to try to answer this out. It's the best form, right? You could go for Camel Riders, sure, but Camel Archers at least don't have to deal with that pesky melee armor. It just doesn't feel like it's good enough for him, right? Like, you're seeing how much quicker the attack speed is on one side versus the other. 1.38 versus the 1.25. And as I mentioned, with that attack speed increase, I would take it down to one. So things can always get worse for the Vietnamese here. Javelin's marching in to do some more permanent damage here. I mean, me and Mike have made the ambitious choice to go Imperial Age. I just don't know what the hell he's meant to do with it now. So the Camel Archers will at least be able to mop up Wave 1 of the Desert Raiders. But behind this, there's 30 more to play with. And also, no answer to the Javelins. You don't really want to be diving Camel Archers into this, even if they are imped up. Oh my god, wait, What? Me and Mikey, he built his landmarks on the forward. Kind of makes sense to get them involved in the battle quicker, but means they could also now be forfeit. And if it looks like there's a comeback coming from Vietnam, keep in mind right now, China is not pushing for everything, right? They're stopping for techs. Malians are going age four. 
We just saw the catch up coming in as Louis went for the guild hall. That's another scary thing, by the way. We're at a stage in the game where if you don't have good range, you can't snipe your own immediately. In fights this big, all it takes is half of one big engagement with four players to take Louis from the start of level three to level four. If we reach level four, that attack speed buffer, these desert raiders are going to feel unstoppable. Yeah, that's still just such a nuisance. Spearman. I'm going to be able to stab at the back of it, but Jabs will just keep running away. And this time, finally, after a little bit of a break, Teal is back. 38 of these knights. Vuva Van, who teched up so much quicker, doesn't have as many for the defense. Need some assistance. Camelotches are now arriving, so that should be enough to scare away Teal. Meanwhile, walls are going up. It looks like Louis did sneak in with Jones, so could try to just play blocker to any potential trade here. Which is unfortunate for the Vietnamese because they were clearly getting ready for that transition. Hmm. What's the way out now for Vietnam? I mean, Magadai are, are probably one of your best shouts here. We have got them on the way. The question mark is whether he has the economy to scale it. It doesn't look great if you look at me and Micah's numbers. He also is at risk of losing the step readout, so no inflation of gold there. Louis so weak this game. That's the role of French picks. When you have greedy picks like this, like you have a player who went fast Imperial 13 minutes, right? Your role isn't to be greedy. Your role isn't to be big in the late game. Your role is to be a big threat of presence in the early game to cover everyone else. If you're someone that gets slapped on, right? When you're playing French in team games, you shouldn't be the guy teching. On average, French players at the highest level should have the longest time in feudal of any Sith. Bar maybe Joe, which is also French. So yeah, that's why Louis, similar to what we saw Y do a few minutes ago, has now bulked Eco to build resources to then go mass cav. Love this detail though. Instead of it being about knights, it's about the unique horsemen. Remember, really big change came in for Joan. Joan can now build the unique units, whether it's champions or riders, out of the respective buildings. So stables, it used to be you had to build keeps to get these. This is a big deal. Joan's riders, they are more expensive, a lot more expensive than horsemen, but they all are also rather statistically better. They have more health, they have a lot more effective HP against range because they start with six ranged armor. And although the bonus damage isn't all ranged, it's only against crossbows, they have decent base damage and are overall good raiders. There is a lot of them, good lord. <laughs> Why is Kyo only making spears? HRE players in a nutshell. I mean, there's a lot of cav on the other side, right? And someone needs to fill that role. No one else is going to do it better than the marching girls HRE. It's just unfortunate. Look how sad he is. Right? It kind of makes him wish he'd gone for mine work. He would at least then had the all pikes for the plus two damage. Jones Riders now moving in. A few villages are going to be whittled down, but the TC defense with the Arbison placements is good enough, though. However, the trade is in trouble. These can easily be culled. On top of that. New wave has arrived. This time, Mas Donzo's diving into the repaired TC of Vuva Van. He said it is going to at least be a bite back as Lumba is able to claim some ground here. But they're once again targeting out the French player on the Vietnamese squad. German Riders just kind of staying out of range now, those static defenses, right? They understand they don't need to be there to take out the trade. My reaction has come in, but that means the Donzo is now starting to dive deeper begin to ripple into the base of Lumba. This is dangerous though. Remember, your opponent on the Bassets has been building Camelotches. Camelotches do get double damage up against Spears. So you need more than just this one unit comp. Magadai also now arriving. Perfect fight for the melee mosh pit for HRE here. Spear on Spear. So it's not about them winning. It's about them not dying. If they last a long time here, Magadai or Camelotches can clear this up. However, Musafari Gunners are also now being added in over time by Scarlet Devil. Man, this is such a long way to walk as well. If Kyo is meant to be the meat shield, he's nowhere near the engagement. He's the his first thing to die, right? You want him to be close to where they're fighting. So I like this choice by China to lean far away from what they know is going to be the front line. I 
do think that, speaking of the front lines, these guys need more of it. Why is making a really cool transition here into Arbitrary? It makes a lot of sense against Magadai because you have got the Pavis for the 5 armor. On top of that, as you get a little bit late in the game and Joan gets close to that level 4, these things turn to machine guns. So for the moment, things have kind of stemmed, right? The, the bleeding has been cauterized a little. But the problem now is in the stalemate, you start to look at trade escalation. And although you stemmed the big bleeding, the raids, especially from Jones Riders, are still hitting. You need to address this or you need to get the Magadai in. If this Magadai are able to breach, huge. You could be taking out AD Eco before you're cleared. The problem though is the stone walls. The stone walls need to be addressed. And right now, when I look at the Vietnamese squad, not a single person has built any seat whatsoever. Desert Ray's like, wait, wait, what? <laughs> oh, Kyo, you cheeky git. He snuck in. That is a scary amount of Desert Raiders, though. What? How? I think the only thing missing, can we check in the... He did take the tech, right? No, and I don't know why. This is a bit of a blunder by CSO. He didn't go for infantry support. I I think we confirmed before that allies do trigger this. It gives plus three armor to your camels, which means you're going to get 30 melee armor and six ranged armor on these units. Crazy increase to your effective HP. I like how Joan is going the hard way about getting level four. It's like, it's safer, but... But it's important, right? Like, you're shutting down the trade as well. It's forcing more and more reaction to the backside. And the whole idea is if your opponent is running back here to stop you, you're gaining ground in the center. One thing that is really unfortunate about this map is that the sacred sites don't make it easy to get a sacred site victory, even when you have that level of map control. What needs to be changed with the current uh, map pool for team games for a start make them more interesting i don't like how most of the maps are just this kind of standard line form and players really far away like maybe there's a spawn where one player is really close to each other on each side and everyone else is retracted kind of like gorge in a different format another thing is change it so that players can't trade with teammates this is silly this contradicts the idea of trade balance trade balance is meant to be there's a risk to doing it even going here is a risk corner is not and finally, I would say the other big thing. Oh my god, I've forgotten it. It's on my head. Uh, the other big thing is sacred sites. Especially in team games, like, why is there a sacred site here and here? There are worse maps than Rocky River for it, but in general, a lot of maps make sacred site victories way too difficult to maintain. Even begin. Feast drop not quite working out. As was hope there, Magadai. Able to run through that die, but we are now noticing the Donzos have snuck through. So Magadai on the way. Nice to try to ride in, but Vuvavan can't deal this on his own. So it looks like they might be able to idle out the trade here, which is a big deal considering the Magadai and Night Spam of the Vietnamese. Also, with attention on the west side, you're now noticing more and more cavalry sneaking in again onto the east. Desert Raiders also shuffling up. Credit to Kyo. Kyo is the only one who's really been trying to break through these walls. Everyone else has been playing fire, fire, put it out. While well, he's been trying to start his own. On a marketplace is about to flop though. More are being built up a little bit shorter by Lumber to ensure they can continue trade. Important that you communicate that to your teammates. Otherwise, they might forget. We do not have incinerators from the Magadai. That's a little surprising, actually. Huh. And wait, is it me or did they change the Musafadi gun around him? Uh, like, model. Because Musafadi gun is... Oh, it's the serpentine powder effect. I think it adds that on the end now, right? If so, that's kind of cool. So I could have sworn the gunners... Yeah, they had muskets before. They changed the model. <laughs> I didn't notice that. That's cool. I assume it's like now when you have serpentine powder, you get the thing on the end. But that might not be as apparent on standard hand it is. Anyway, he at least discovers that the marketplace is going up, isn't able to stop it. On the front side, 
Why is trying to shove in here? I'm getting the feeling we might be looking at a wonder game. You know, the Vietnamese are doing really good to hold on. The Chinese are still always piling on, but they're never finding that killing blow. And I don't think they're going to. So I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing Louis, for example, just stop power resources here. In fact, he's at 193 eco. Yeah, th th this is a, a wonder play. All right, buckle yourself in, folks. We've got some ways to go with this game. Somehow we went from 13-minute Imperial Age for Iobids to it's probably going to take close to an hour. <laughs> the gun switches when you get that tech. Okay, but other civs don't have that, right, Hosin? Other civs with hand cannoneers have that by default, so they might need to update all the models. What was going up the desert is about to break in. Oh, no. Remember, you don't get bonus damage with a heavy maces, so transitioning to men at arms is kind of horrible when you're up against desert raiders here. You prefer to be in the spheres. Also, faster moving units, a better chance of not getting kited here by the range form, as we're now seeing. Just so painful here with the 17 damage. On top of that, he's got it. Golden Age 5, so. Check the attack speed on these guys. They attack every 1.02 seconds in range form, every 1.12 in melee. That's vile. 1.12 attack speed in melee in particular, right? Like a men at arms takes 1.38 seconds. <laughs> this is the this is the true late game unit, folks. It may not have the biggest health ball, 227, but it hits like a truck and has enough armor to stay alive doing it. Rams in the meantime are starting to break in deep, but I can't believe this. They have one player at 199 economy, and they're breaking the enemy on the west and the east. They're getting deeper and deeper. Joan, in the meantime, the one military unit for Louis is at least participating in the main battles now because there's no raise to assist. Instead, they've come to the main engagement to get that XP. It may look like Louis is doing nothing, but if he gets that level four, the contribution on its own with Triumph, the attack speed increase of 35% is like a whole extra army is there if you get the big engagement. However, Joe might not exist for long with those horses touch <laughs> It's coming, guys. Level 4 Joan, Jeune de Blast is about to be here. The funny part is Louis, like, what is going on here? Okay, here he has built it. I just checked the field. I was like, where'd it go? Wanda is online. Notre Dame has been made. I don't know if it's going to have to wait too long. <laughs> it's not going to be long before I think the Vietnamese give over. They haven't been able to approach the Chinese side of the map in the last 10 minutes. This is... I think this is over. Shouldn't have blast in now. The only upside is they immediately use the Vast Inspiration. So for the Vietnamese, they can at least dodge the first usage there as the main fight hasn't occurred yet. But the negative is why the main fight hasn't occurred. Their army can't take this. And what the f... Why? <laughs> Neomiko is like, this is my pond. I will house my yacht here with my million dollar earnings from prize pools in the future. Oh, there's so much population, man. That's so painful to look at. Was that 18 population just locked into a pond? And the issue is they're just going around, right? This is the Mongols version of the Magano line. And right now we've got a Blitzkrieg. 94 Desert Raiders roaming. Dive continues deeper. Heal with this arbitrary night balance is doing everything he needs. Joan de Blas providing the perfect assistance. And that wonder as time goes on, it's just gonna get more and more insulin. Keep after keep after keep after keep coming in. Louis MT playing this defense strategy like he's in a free for all. Magadai, oh, I feel so bad for him. Red has at least dove in, but this may be too late. It's a good start. He's going to shrink their economy a little bit, but you know, if you kill 40 workers here for four players to reboom, that's nothing. On top of that, what have you lost in return? 
Hand Cannoneers are about to intercept your trade. And this is much harder to remove than Magadai. Because over time, these Magadai are just dying to the TCs, to the keeps. Going to get a good hit, at least, into Green's farms. But Louis MT, he's sitting at, what, four TCs, I believe? He's more than okay. And remember, Louis MT is the guy that went to 200 pop. He needs economy to die. You're doing him a favor right now, so you can actually build real units. We already see the Jones Riders are on the way, so that'll be the interception force. In the meantime, Dive gets deeper into Lumber's main. He only has seven military units in tow. How can this say Magadai? Mm, me like you very much. Happily takes that trade. Should be an eventual defense for, for Nehemiah, but this is the next wave of Magadai that are being held up. Meanwhile, on the east side, the Desert Raiders are getting closer to the trade on the north end. Magadai. Last, the Raiders are going to fall. So, aftermath, I think that was about 40 workers killed in total. Not good enough, though. GG gets gold. That is it. The Vietnamese have been slain in the upper bracket. The Chinese will be the first to make it through to those upper bracket finals, and they do it. In style, a dominant game one that took time to evolve. Game two, start to finish. The plan was clear and the plan was overwhelming.